about um, do-it-yourself transhumanism. Uh, for those of you who don't know, transhumanism is uh, improving yourself with technology, trying to incorporate technology into yourself, become a cyborg, or otherwise use technology to self-augment. Um, I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time. Uh, right now I'm president of Hack Lab Toronto, which is a kind of like a, a DIY makerspace, and we work with technology. And this is a shot from me at Noisebridge in San Francisco. It's another hackerspace in San Francisco, much larger and, and more awesome. And I'm, I'm wearing this ridiculous like electric gizmo that flashes in time with my heart there. I called it the pulse choker. And it, it actually did kind of choke you. <laughs> so it was lots of fun. But um, the, way, the way I actually got into this was with a compass belt. So this is called a field space belt. It's made by a German group called Field Space. You strap it around your waist, and it vibrates. And it vibrates to tell you what way is north. And when you wear it, you get this unerring sense of direction. You get a homing instinct like a pigeon. Or at least that's what the Wired article said, and I believe everything in Wired magazine. <laughs> so I made my own. Um, I decided not to make belts. I made an anklet, and you strap it around your ankle, and it vibrates to tell you what way is north. And I wore it for two months straight, and I did not develop an unerring sense of direction. But I did learn when my sense of direction is good and when my sense of direction is bad, which is very valuable. And I learned that you know the, the regular grid of the streets is not as regular as you think sometimes. Um, if any of you Google DIY transhumanism in response to this poster, you would have seen this image. This is Lee Ananim. She is unbelievably hardcore. She wants to take the North Paw, my device, and build an implantable version and implant it under her skin, on her ankle, which is totally rad. Um, <laughs> I'm not that hardcore. But it is really cool that there's people out there who are that hardcore, including this guy, Kevin Warwick. He implanted a device into his forearm that monitored his nerves, and he was able to use that device to control the robotic hand that you see over the internet. He also did it like 5,000 miles away. And then he got his wife to do the same thing, and they were able to send messages back and forth. One, you know, one, he would squeeze, and she would feel it in her forearm, and vice versa. <laughs> totally awesome. Uh, here's another implanted thing. He's got a, there's a small magnet in his finger. And actually, the magnet has broken apart, and that's why it's turned black. They're not normally like that. But you can use it to sense magnetic fields. So anytime there's an alternating current, that creates a magnetic field, and you can feel it in your finger. And you can also pick up small objects like bottle caps and paper clips and other little magnets, which is super rad. Um, and here, this is another Toronto guy. This is Ibor. He lost his eyes in a, a, a shotgun accident as a teenager. And recently, he designed um, an, a fake eye with a camera and a radio transmitter. And he wears it in his eye socket. And he's a, he's a filmmaker. He actually makes documentary films from his own eye. It's totally rad. You can actually, like in the film, you can see him blink. There's like eyelashes in the film. It's rad. So all of this is building towards this awesome book, Natural Born Cyborgs. The theory in the book is that humans are naturally cyborgs. The way we learn to use our arm is the same way that we learn to use our cell phone. It's the same way when you sit in a car, the car kind of becomes a part of you. That feeling you have that the tool is an extension of yourself, that's the way the human brain works. And Natural Born Cyborgs has hundreds of examples of this. It's very compelling. Uh, this is another um, transhumanism kind of manifesto. This is by Natasha Bidamore. She's literally like reconceptualized what it means to be human. She's like, I'm going to have smart skin. I'm going to have biosensors. I'm going to have you know super meta brains. I'm going to have solar powered skin. I'm going to have like all this awesome stuff. And uh, this you guys might recognize a new game recently. This is called Deus Ex. And he's actually got a robotic arm here. They they chopped off his arms. And he got robotic arms because the robotic arms are better than human arms. You should, there's like shots in the film of him like crushing solid objects. It's rad. And there's also there's other characters in the in the game that have like guns on their arms and you know awesome stuff. Um, and another recent movie here. This is Planet of the Apes. Um, basically, there's a serum that they use and they inoculate these monkeys and the monkeys become super smart and then take over the world. That's Rise of the Planet of the Apes, right? And and this is all very like transhuman esque, right? So it's it permeates our popular culture. And that's why I think it's so important to take it back into our own hands and do it ourselves. So if you don't want to implant yourself, here's one way you can have the magnetic sense of perception. You can take small magnets and use um, acrylic nail in order to put them onto your fingernails. And then in a similar way, you can pick up small metal objects. You can feel like they're fields. It's not as sensitive as if you implanted yourself. I've tried this, but it is something. And here's another famous Toronto example. This is Steve Mann. He's, he's really famous. Starting in the 1980s, he was doing uh, what was called wearable computing. So he was wearing little display devices and computers on his, on his waist and augmenting his reality by superimposing you know, stuff from the computer on your vision. And this still has not come to pass in the mainstream. There are a bunch of companies working on it. Um, here's another slide. So on the back of that white device, there's an array of 20 by 20 electrodes. You put those electrodes into your mouth. 
you're blind, this is really cool because what happens is the camera transduces visual signals, outputs them on your tongue, and you can walk around avoiding obstacles even though you're blind because the brain adapts, the brain figures out, oh, these signals on my tongue actually correspond to the world. And that's another example of brain plasticity. Um, another example of blind, this is Ben Underwood. There's amazing videos of him on the internet if you Google Ben Underwood. He, uh, he was blind at birth, but he learned to click his palate and listen for the echoes. And he's able to like rollerblade and other things. And he's photoed here with a dolphin who also does ultrasonic echolocation in order to figure out what objects are nearby. Uh, this is a project of mine. It's called HeartSpark. I'm wearing it here. It flashes in time with my heartbeat in case you guys haven't figured it out. So it's probably flashing like crazy right now. Uh, <laughs> It's been a lot of fun building electronic jewelry and, you know, experimenting with um, this. This was a, like, social augmentation piece. What happens when other people see how fast my heart beating is going? They can tell when I'm excited or when I'm bored. Um, and this, this is another sense that I would love to have. This is an infrared camera. It takes shots like this. You can see what's hot and what's not. So his nose is very cold here. And you can imagine using, like, the Steve Mann augmented wearable computers in order to use a camera like that, redirect it through the site, and you can do all kinds of crazy hacks, like you can see where people have stepped because they leave warm footprints. Um, this is another thing I'm involved with. It's called quantified self. It's um, people using things like cell phones and pedometers in order to get feedback, numerical feedback, about their behaviors in order to try to improve themselves. We do show and tell sessions about every six weeks here in Toronto. Uh, quantified self show and tell, if you want to look that up, it's lots of fun. And um, if you want to know more, I hang out in Kensington Market at Hack Lab. And you can go to my website, sensebridge.net. And the most important thing is to get out there and experiment, because it's DIY, and, and I love this kind of stuff. So thank you.